guys, Video Game Master here with another video! As you can probably tell from my intro and the shirt on my character, I really love the Zelda series. I played Zelda since 2011, so I was watching some Zelda top 10s and boss rankings on YouTube and decided to make my own boss ranking on the first Zelda game I've ever played, Ocarina of Time. Sorry N64 players, my first experience with the game was on the 3DS version that was released back in 2011, around the same time of Skyward Sword. Anyways, my boss ranking is going to include the final bosses, so spoiler warning if you haven't played the game. Also, I'm not including mini bosses. In this ranking, we'll be starting with the bosses I didn't really enjoy the most, up to the bosses I really enjoyed. Make sure to remember that these rankings are just my opinion. Anyway, on with the countdown. You walk into a big room. And suddenly the door slams shut behind you. And you start hearing rustling from the roof. So you look up to see this huge monster with one eye. Which is named Goma. In my opinion, I didn't really enjoy the boss battle with Goma that much. I know it's the first part of the game, and it's supposed to be simple. I just feel in some way it's too simple and it doesn't really give a threatening vibe to it. To defeat Goma, you need to use the slingshot you got in the dungeon to hit his eye when it's red to make him open for attacks. He also spawns little baby Gomas if you don't shoot his eye in time. Inside the guts of Jabu Jabu's belly lies some sort of monster with electric city shooters and little jellyfishes. This monster is Baronade. I say he's a step up from Gomo, but he's still pretty simple to beat. He first uses the boomerang to hit his tentacles attached to the wall, which causes him to bring out his jelly friends and spin him around the room. You need to stun Baronade with the boomerang to take out his jelly friends so he can start go around the room like crazy shooting electricity at you. Which you need to once again stun him and finish him off. Not a bad boss fight, but I still think there's some better than the ones in this game. King Dodongo from Dodongo's Cavern. This boss fight was pretty enjoyable, being able to just throw bombs in his mouth when he inhales and slashing him until he dies. He does shoot fire at you if you don't throw the bombs in time. Other than that, this boss was pretty fun and enjoyable. After you get the Master Sword and travel seven years in the future and now play as your adult self, you need to enter the first temple, the Forest Temple. And at the end of the dungeon, you enter a strange room with paintings. As you turn around to leave, you end up seeing Ganondorf right in front of you! But it's not actually him, it's just his puppet, Phantom Ganon. This boss battle was pretty awesome when I first played against him. You had to use your new bow to shoot the paintings that he's in. He could trick you with fake copies and shoot down lightning, so watch out. After a few more hits, he goes all magical tennis mode, that you have to hit the balls of light that he throws at you and wail on him with the Master Sword. Overall, a pretty epic, enjoyable boss fight. After saving all the Gorons and obtaining the boss key, you go to, into the boss room and see a big platform in the middle. You step onto it, and all the and all the platform starts to shake, and out comes a long dragon named Volvagia. Man, when I first saw this boss, I was like, "Wow, I'm fighting a dragon! So cool!" Anyway, you start out by looking for the hole that he's going to pop out of and use the Megaton Hammer to hit his head and stun him. Then, you use your sword to do some damage. After a while, he starts flying around the room spitting fire and having boulders fall from the ceiling. Just rinse and repeat with the hammer and sword, and you're good for some fried dragon. After going all around the water temple, raising and lowering the water level, and trying to find the key you just missed to get to the boss room, 
You see a bunch of platforms surrounded by water. Once you step onto the... You get to point of view of the monsters you're facing. Some sort of water snake named Morpheo. This boss is pretty fun to go up against. You have to use the hookshot to grab the little red sphere and slash it with your sword. The fun thing I like to do with this boss was to trap it into the corner and slash it at it like crazy. <laughs> Overall, a pretty fun boss fight, but a pretty annoying temple. After climbing all the way up to the top of Ganondorf's tower, you meet up with the King of Evil himself, playing his organ. The Triforce appears on your hand and Zelda's and you know it's about to get intense. The fight with the King of Evil himself starts out with him hunching the floor and the platforms falling off. Then he conjures up an evil tennis ball and you start hitting it back and forth until it hits him. Then you use your light arrows to shoot him and slash him a whole bunch. He also has another attack where he throws a whole bunch of evil balls which you can bounce back with a spin attack. Do the same thing again a few times and he's done. Overall a pretty intense fight. I love the freaking music. The music is so intense. After Ganondorf Tower collapses, and you and Zelda gets out safely, Ganondorf rises from the rubble. Using the Triforce of Power, he turns into the beast, Ganon, and knocks the Master Sword out of your hands. The true final battle has begun. Using your light arrows, you can stun Ganon and hit his tail with the Megaton Hammer or Big Goron Sword. After a while, you're able to, to get Dan Ganon down and quickly grab your Master Sword and get some hits with it. After a while, Zelda gives you the powers to finish off Ganon and have him sealed away in the Sacred Realm. A great conclusion to a great game, but it ain't the best on this list. You enter the end of the Spirit Temple and see a tall platform you can climb up to. You end up encountering the twin Rova sisters, Kutake and Kume, which one has ice magic and the other has fire. In order to beat them, you have to use the mirror shield to reflect their magic attacks at the opposite element. After a few hits, the two fuse together to form Twin Rora. Now you have to store up energy from the same element three times and send it back at her and making her open for attacks. Do that a few times and she's down for the count. An awesome boss, but it's still not number one. After finishing the very creepy Shadow Temple, you enter a room with a hole in it. You drop down onto a giant drum, which two hands come out of nowhere and start banging on the drum. Then you get to see the giant monster that which is doing so is called Bongo Bongo. In order to defeat this invisible foe, you need to shoot arrows at his giant hands and stun them. After both hands are hit, he charges at you. You can hit him in his eye with your bow and slash away at his eye. Repeat, and Bongo Bongo is no more. I really like the design of this boss, and how weird it looks, and the concept itself is pretty neat. And that's why he's number one on my list. 